You know, was, we, was, we was worshiping and singing. I, I, I had to tell Sid to, to type something in the phone right quick. God gave me a title to a message. You know, as we were singing, uh, you know what, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. And God gave me a title to a message. It just says this. It said, if you know who you are, then you'll know who you ain't. Did somebody hear what I said? If you know who you are, then you'll know who you're not. To understand that, you know what, I'm no longer a slave to fear because, you know what, I know who I am. I'm a child of God. Amen. I'm a child of God. And I was thinking about in, 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 in part of the, the other song that we sung that, that you know what, uh, my, my help comes from the Lord. Psalms 121, 1 and 2, one of my favorite, all, all, all the verses are my favorite, but, but that, that, that one, and I've shared it many times, how that an that, uh, uh, hey, uh, evangelist from 20,000 miles away that spoke to me one night in a service, and he said, I don't know what's going on with you, but you got something going on, something happened, and I was like, yeah, I did have a whole lot at that moment, but I was like, in my mind, he don't really know because he really don't know me. But you know what? Watch this. I have people all the time that say, how do you know my business? I don't know your business, but God knows your business. Amen. <laughs> he knows your business. And that, that, that friend of mine, he's a, he's a friend of mine now. He came from South Africa. But he said, Psalms 121, 1 and 2, he said, I lift my, my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. And I said, yep. He said, no, you didn't hear me. Then he told me to go to the door and he looked outside and it's nighttime. He said, look at the stars, look at the moon, look at the sky, look at the trees, look at everything you see out there. Look at everything that you can see. And I did and I come back. He said, now listen to me. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the one that made everything that you just looked at. My help comes from every, from the one that created all things. He said, now what you got going on that he can't handle tonight? And I know when we sang that a while ago, I feel like there's somebody here, somebody watching, listening, that you got something going on that, that you know what, it's been a struggle and a battle for you to just to believe that it can be fixed, it can be changed. What you got going on that he can't handle tonight? What you got going on that he can't take care of? Know that, that you know what, he, he knows how to handle it. He knows how to take care of it. So know this, that the same one that created all of heaven and all of earth, is the one that's taking care of your problem. And we're going to talk about what he does for us and what, he, what he'll do, do uh, with us. And, and this is a, a message that came from a song that I heard as I listened to my worship. And uh, during that week when, when, when uh, uh, how many knows what the enemy means for bad, God will turn to good. And, and when I was in that week of crud and kind of laid out there, I, I played my worship, and, and, and I, I prayed, and I listened to God, and he spoke to me, and I heard this song, so we're going to talk tonight. Open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 28. Somebody needed to know tonight that that one that created heaven and earth is on your side, and he's got you. Amen. He's got you. You got nothing. We, we got the bracelet on. If you don't have one, we'll get you one. I got some right in there that says, you know what, God is bigger. He's bigger than anything you ever face. Amen. Matthew 28, 20 says, God's word says, well, first, let's do this. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful, so thankful unto you for just blessing us, being so good to us, being with us. Father, helping us and bringing us in here tonight to receive everything that you have for us, Father, to, to remind us that, that greater you is in us and he that's in that world, Father. And we just thank you tonight for your word. We pray that it be all of you and none of me and let your word do exactly as you planned and purpose. And we love you, thank you, and praise you, and ask it all in Jesus' precious and holy name. Everybody say it. Amen. Matthew 28 and 20. God's word says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. We're going to, talk, we're going to look at part B in the scripture now. We're going to look at what I call part two of the scripture where it says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age or even to the end of the world. 
Lo, I am with you. And first, there's something I want to, to share with you as, as, as I was, was doing this that, that God just did. It's one of those things, and I share it a lot and, and have it to happen a lot. And I ask a lot of times, have you ever had it to happen? But, but somebody knows what I'm talking about when I say something that will that, 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 just jump out and grab you off the page. When you're reading, you're studying, you're studying your Bible, and all of a sudden, something just goes boom. Something that, that, again, you may have read it a hundred times, but all of a sudden, this time, it just jumps out of the page on you and it grabs you. And I want you to look at this. Somebody's had one of those days. Amen. Something just jumped out on you. Look at this right here. Jesus said, lo, I am with you. And when I read that, the Lord took me back to Genesis 3 and 14. And watch this. Look at this. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. He said, I am. When they ask who sent you, tell them I am sent you. He said, I, I am has sent you. Now watch this, y'all. You think about what, 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 what I'm about to say here. The same God, the same one that sent Moses to deliver the Israelites out of bondage. The same one that sent Moses to bring the Israelites out. Somebody's seeing this. The same one that delivered the Israelites out of Egypt, out of the, the slavery, the bondage that they were in. He said, tell them I am, did it. I am. And what's this, y'all? We just read in Matthew where he said, I am with you. The same one, y'all, he said, I am with you even till the end of the world. Now, what's this, y'all? Lo, I am with you. Who's with me? I am is. The same one that sent Moses to bring out the, 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 the uh, Israelites to be set free. Watch this. The same one that sent his son to set us free. The same one that sent his son to rescue us said, I am with you. I am with you. Watch this. Everywhere I go and everything I do, guess who's with me? I am is with me. He said, I am with you. The same one that, that gave his son upon that cross. Now I'm about to holler up in here. Think about what it's saying. He said, lo, I am with you. And in Genesis, he said, tell them that I am sent you. I am is the one that brought three million people out of, is, out of Egypt that was in bondage. I am is the one that created heaven and earth. I am is the one that gave his son on that cross to die for me and you to give us life. I am. And he said, I am with you. He didn't say, what's this? He didn't say, lo, I am with you until times get tough. He didn't say, lo, I am with you until it gets rough and I'm going to have to go. He didn't say, lo, I am with you on the mountain. He said, lo, I am with you always. 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 No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what's happening, no matter what's taking place, I'm with you always, even till the end of the world. I ain't going nowhere. Ain't nobody running me off. I ain't separating you. I am with you. That's what he said. I am with you. I am. He said he'd be with us through everything. And watch this, y'all. That's his promise for us. He said if we do our part, we keep his commands, we keep his word. That's our promise. That's the promise that we have, that no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening, no matter where you're at, no matter what's taking place, he said, I'm right there with you. I am. I am. I needed to share that. I needed to, to, to just to share that to say, you know what, y'all, this is what he reminded me of. It's something that just jumped out, something that just grabbed me. But to be reminded of all the way back from the beginning, he said, I am. And then he says right here in Matthew, I am. I am with you. Who's going to be with us? I am. Somebody... Watch this. Listen. When you say I am, you said enough. Enough said. Amen. Amen. 
You've said, you've said enough. He is who he says he is. He's the great I am. He's the great I am. You know what? He's the one that come to set the captives free. He's the one, y'all. Somebody with me. He told Moses, he said, go tell my children, go tell Pharaoh, I am sent you. That's all you need to say. That's all it needs to be said. What's this? God's word says he's our advocate. He's our attorney. All we need to do is tell folks, tell the enemy, tell everybody else, I am is representing me. I am has got me. Amen. He's got me. They say, who is? He said, I am. What's this? When the enemy steps up in front of, you know what, that, that great gavel, you know what, that great judgment and tries to say, you know what, well, this and did this, this and did that. You know what, the great I am is going to stand up and say, no, I am here to represent. I took his guilt. I took her shame. I took that. I am. To understand when we talk about I am, how big I am is. And what I am means to me and you. Amen. Just tell him the great I am sent you. What's this? When you go forth, God has you to go forth to do something. He has you to go forth to, to share with somebody, and somebody wants to know, what are you doing here? Say, I am sent me. I am, I am, I am. Say, amen, I am sent me. I am. And that's all you got to say. What's this? That's all Moses had to say. And Pharaoh said, what's this? It said Pharaoh's heart was hard. No, you know what the Bible says? God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So that he could let him know, you know what? Go on and act with your hard-headed self. Go on and keep rebelling. Oh, he's speaking to somebody. Go on, you know what? And keep talking about no. And then you wonder why them flies flying around your head. Frogs are running around your feet. Amen. But he said, just tell him. Tell him I am. Y'all, he said he'd be with us. And that's what I wanted to, 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 to talk about this evening. That's what God put on my heart. As I told you, the message that, that God's given is from a, from a song uh, uh, that I heard in the worship. It's a song that, that, that just came on and I, had, I was listening. And, and, and the title of the song was called Trenches. And God titled this message, He's in the Trenches. God's in the Trenches. Amen. How many knows he's not afraid to get in the trenches with me and you? Amen. He's not afraid to dive in there with us. Matter of fact, how many knows he's been in the trenches with us? You know what? How many knows that, that look, he was in a trench? He went through it before we did. Amen. Y'all, the God of the mountain is also the God of the valley. Listen to me real close. The God on the mountain is also the God that's in the valley. If I've been on the mountain and I'm praising and all is well, but then I slip off in that valley, guess what? He's going to be right there with me. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you. He said, you know what? I'll be with you always. Can somebody hear me? Y'all, how many can testify? Can I get a witness? Somebody knows about being in the trenches. Somebody knows he's been there with you. Somebody knows. How many can testify that he's been there? Oh, somebody ought to be shouting. We've been talking about shouting. Somebody ought to be shouting. I want you to think back in all that you've been through, even in your worst hour, even when you're going through your worst hour, think about all you've been through and stop and think about it and look at it and know he was there. He was there. He was there. Look, how many, how many... It, now that your life's been changed, can relate to this. But now you can look back. The old song, the Amazing Grace, I was blind, but now I see. Now you can see where, 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 where God was there for you and trying to take care of you and trying to reach you and trying to, 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 to get you even before you come to know him. Now you can look back and see times where you said, you know what? That was God. That was God. That was God. I have people... To, 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 to talk to me and share with me all the time. And they'll say, you know what, I was at this place and I was that. And when they start talking about it, 
about what happened, and they'll say, that was God. They'll say, yeah, it was God. I know, I, can, I, I remember when it happened. He was there. He's always been there. He always, always been in, in my life. You know what? And, and, and through my life, since my life, the, the new life he's been giving me, and he's given me, I, you know what? I look and I see all the things that I've dealt with, all the things I've faced, and he's been there, y'all. He's always been there. And I was thinking recently about his faithfulness. I was thinking about how faithful God is. You know, we read the, the scripture, we read the word, we quote the word, we talk about God is faithful. But have you ever just stopped and really thought about how faithful he is to you? Yeah. Personally. You ever thought about how faithful he is to your family? You ever thought about how faithful he is to his children? He's faithful. And I was thinking recently about his faithfulness, y'all. You ever just look back over your life, especially in your walk, since you began to walk with him? Y'all, I, I was thinking as I, I was laying last week, a week before, about things that I've been through. Things in my life that I've dealt with, things that I've faced. And I was just talking to God in the middle of the night, and I began to talk to him, and I said, Lord, you've always been there. You've always been there for me. You've always, you've done things when, you know what, didn't look like it, no hope or no chance, and you've done things where, where to, with, with the natural eye, it looks like there ain't no way. But you know what, you've always been there. You've made it happen. You've always been there for me. Y'all, and, 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 and I, I thought about how that, that this word is so true because if you think about it, watch this. It wasn't at certain times, certain places. It was every step of the way. Can I get a witness? Every step of the way. Watch this. Through the good, through the bad, through the, through the tough, every step of the way, he's always been there. Y'all, I, I thought about this. In every bit of it, in everything, I never was alone. I hear people all the time, you know what, Christian folks say, well, I just feel so alone. You forgot who's with you. You forgot who said, lo, I am with you. And there's times when we feel we have that, that, that kind of feeling. We deal with stuff and go through stuff, feel that emptiness. But he's there. He's there. Sometimes people say, well, you know what? I just don't, I don't, I don't hear. Or I, you know what? I just don't, look. Maybe he's just listening. Maybe he's just holding you. Maybe he's just, you know what? Saying, I'm here. I comfort you. He's with us. Here's what I do know. No matter what, I know his promise is true, and he's there. He's there. No matter where you're at, guess what? He's not afraid to go in anywhere with you. He's not afraid to be anywhere. Y'all, when my life was changed, I didn't know what was fixing to happen. I know what's going to take place. Didn't know where I was headed. But I said, God, and I meant this with everything within me. I said, God, this, this, this life that you've given me, I don't ever want to let it go. I don't ever want it to be gone. I want to keep it. So no matter what happens, if I wind up having to be somewhere, I want to make sure that I'm still with you and I'm still serving you. And you know what he said? He said, I'll be with you. I'll go with you. I'll go wherever you want to go. Wherever you got to go, I'll be with you. And how many knows, you know what, that no man holds the key to keep you and me bound? Jesus took those keys back. Amen? Watch this. I can be free anywhere I go because you know what? Whom the Son set free is free indeed, and I got him. Anywhere I go and anything I do, I can be free. And I can go forth. You know what? I can serve him on the mountain. I can serve him in the valley. There's only two times that we need to praise him. When we feel like it, when we don't feel like it. Amen? Because what's this? He never let us down. He's never failed us. Amen? Y'all, as I was talking to him, I was speaking that night, and, and I said, Lord, you've been with me. And, and I said this to him. I said, Lord, I got nothing to complain about. How could I come complain? How could I complain? Because what's this, y'all? Yeah, I've been through some things, but guess what? I stand before you today. He brought me out of them. 
You know what? You've been through some things, but guess what? You're here, so praise God, he brought you out. I've dealt with stuff, and I've talked about it for years. How many knows that we know about stuff? Amen. We know about some stuff. And, 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 and we've dealt with stuff, and a lot of stuff we brought on ourselves. Amen. A lot of stuff that we dealt with was excess baggage. Hello? I'll preach that another day. Amen. But I've dealt with stuff, and as I said, I've been through some things. But there's not one of them I can't say that he ain't brought me out of. Amen. He brought me out of every bit of it. He brought me out of all of it. Everything that I dealt with, everything that I faced. You know what? All the hurts, the pains, the confusion, the, the, the frustration, or any kind of sickness, anything. God's always been there. And he always will be. Amen. I might have had to face it. But I had a promise. I had a promise that he'd be right there with me. I had a promise that he'd take care of me. I had a promise that, you know what, I wasn't facing it alone. I had a promise, what's this, that he was bigger than what I was facing. Oh, that would make somebody holler. I had a promise that, you know what, no matter what, what, what it looked like, you know what, my God was bigger. Yeah. And I had a promise that he's able to do exceeding and abundantly more than I could ever ask or think of, according to the believing power that lived in me. We got that promise, y'all. We got that promise. You know what? There's, there's, there's people sitting here, people watching and listening all over, that you've had things to happen in your life that when it happened, boy, it looked like it was the worst thing it ever was in the world. You had things to happen that it made it look like that, that you know what, I don't know about this one. I don't know how this could get fixed. da da da, -da. My superhero showed up. I got a t-shirt that says Jesus, and it's got the Superman symbol right there, and it says there's power in his name. I like to wear it. I like to go. And people say, I like your shirt. I'll say, he's my hero. All of a sudden, it looked like it couldn't be fixed. It looked like it couldn't be handled. It looked like it was going to be bad. Everybody else said it's going to be bad. Everybody was agreeing it's going to be bad. And he went, da 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 Jesus showed up and caused you and caused me to walk away shaking our head, come out, my gosh. Talking about, how did that happen? Don't worry about the how, just know who. Amen. Don't worry about the how, just know who. I was talking to a couple of fellas this morning, and we were talking about some things, and, and this... Uh, and stuff, and it was talking about Lord, and it was a, it was a principal at a school, and, and a guy from the Board of Education over there that's talking to, and, and they're sharing, and, and something came up, and, and I just said, guys, I got to tell y'all about my God. And I began to tell them about what took place in my life over this past year. I began to tell them about what, what was said, and what was diagnosed, and what happened, and then what's taking place. And both of them looked at me. They said, we've seen you through this whole time. We've seen you. One of them said, you was at a ball game. Or at ball games, they said, we've seen you. We didn't have a clue. I said, you know what? I never lost a pound. I never lost an appetite. I never was sick. I never went through anything everybody said I was going to go through. Because you know what? I said, God took care of me. He heard and he answered the prayers of me and many people. And God took care of me. And I said, they said, that's crazy. I said, that's what the doctor said. And it's, it's, it's mind-blowing, but you know what? It really shouldn't be because that's his promise. Even before that happened, he said, Lo, Gary, I'll be with you. Always. I'll be with you through this right here. I didn't just get you while everything was good, while you was doing good. You know what? I'm going to be with you through this right here, too. I'm going to take care of you. Same thing with you. I didn't get you just when your heart was good. I got you when your heart was broke, too. I'll be with you through the heartbreak. I'll be through, with you through the pain. I'll be with you through all the stuff that you, 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 you've dealt with. I'll be with you. I didn't just get you cause, like to hang around with because right now you're happy. He said, I'll be with you always. 
I'll be with you. I'll go through whatever. And to understand, and you know, they said, man, we'd never know. I said, that's the way our God works. You know what? I knew I had his promise. I know, I know what his promise is, and I surely wasn't going to go forth and claim nothing else. I wasn't going to go forth and say, oh, y'all, I'm bad. No, praise God, my father said, I'm good. I'm good to go. All is good. All is well. I'm good. I know what his word says, and you know what? That, 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 I, got, I got a promise. He said, Lo, I'll be with you. Guess what? You can have all the people in the world, but his word says he's the great physician. He's the great provider. He's the great protector. He's everything that you and I will ever need. You know what? So, yeah, you got all these other folks, but you know what? You got the great one with you. He said, I'll be with you tonight when you lay down. I'll be with you when you get up. I'll be with you when you're coming. I'll be with you when you're going. I'll be with you everywhere you go and everything you do. Watch this. Close your eyes and feel this right here. He's throwing his arm around you right now. He said, I got you. I got you. I got you. That's what his promise is, y'all. Y'all, he's brought us through every situation, step by step, every step of the way. He's taking care of us because he said he would. Y'all, we have the promise. And the promise is, I'll be with you. And I'll take care of you. Now, somebody can relate to what I'm talking about. Somebody's standing on that promise right now. Hello? Somebody's standing on it. Somebody can relate. Somebody can say, boy, I didn't think that there was no way. And praise God, I, I'm here right now because my God did what he said he'd do. <laughs> Somebody knows tonight that he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Amen. He reached way, way, way down in that miry clay to rescue us. Amen. Watch this, y'all. I mean, he rolled. He had, look, I'm telling you, you look around in here, he had to roll his sleeves way up to reach down there and get us. Amen. But you know what? He wasn't afraid to. He wasn't afraid to reach down there when we was going down for the last time, when everybody said there wasn't no more hope, when we thought we were done, when we thought we was finished. He said, hold on, hold on. Yes, somebody ought to shout, because you remember. I don't dwell in my past, but I'll never forget what he's done. Somebody's remembering what he's done when he reached way, way, way down there when you thought it was over. When you thought there was no hope, and he went, come on up out of there. When he pulled us up, somebody remembers. Amen. And watch this, y'all. He didn't just pull us out to let us go. He didn't lift us up to drop us. Amen. Amen. He, didn't, he didn't do it just to stop right there and say, okay, I got you out. Now you're on your own. Let me say this to you. You put a new baby in a crib over there next to that wall and say, make it on your own. That baby ain't going to make it. I thank God that when he pulled us out, he didn't say, here, you're on your own. He said, I got you. I'll be with you always. Everywhere you go and everything you do, I got you. <laughs> How many knows that we need a little direction? A lot of direction. How many knows that we need a little correction? Oh, we don't like the correction part. Amen. Oh, but God. He said, I'll be with you. I'll show you the way. I'll help you. And when you get out of line, I'll bump you back. Somebody knows about being bumped back. Somebody felt that when you know you felt like I just ain't where I need to be. And he said, I'm getting you. I got you. Somebody knows about being that one sheep, that one out of, the, out of the hundred. You know what? Somebody knows about being that one sheep. When he left the 99, amen. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. When he left the 99 and come and picked us up, you know what? When he said, what's this? Jesus said this. They said, well, you know what? Why would you eat with sinners? He said, you know what? If you wasn't sick, you wouldn't need a doctor, would you? He said, I didn't come to call you know what, the, 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 the rights, I come to call the sinners. I come to, you know what, I come to reach those that, that, that need to be reached. And thank God he left the 99 and come got me and you. Amen. amen. Now that made more than 100 when you count us, but amen. Y'all, he, he reached down and pulled us out. 
He's our God on the mountain. Amen. He's our God in the trenches. He'll get in the trenches. Watch this. He'll be right there with us. He don't leave us when the going gets tough. And somebody knows what I'm talking about when I say that. Somebody's had that one and them folks, that ones that said, I'm with you until the, tough, until the going got tough. Hello? And all of a sudden you look up and you feel all alone because they wasn't there no more. Amen. But he wants you to know, you know what? Paul said it like this. He said, when I got into council, I got into court, I stood before council. He said, I looked around and there wasn't nobody with me. But he said, then I closed my eyes. And when I opened my eyes back, there stood the Lord. Y'all, I can tell you this. You would much rather it be him than all the people in the world because all the people in the world can't do for you what he can. Amen. He's the only one that can do it. Part of that song said this. It said, whenever I'm defenseless, you climb in the trenches with me. You climb in there with me. You know what? You, you're right there with me. When I'm, when I'm defenseless, when, when, you know what, I feel like I can't, can't, can't do nothing, you remind me, I'm right there. Somebody remembers. Somebody's dealt with that. Somebody's been there and said, you know what, I, I, can't, I can't do this. He said, no, but I can. Oh, but I can. Amen. Matter of fact, when you say I can't do it, that means we're getting out of the way and letting him do what he wants to do. Amen. Somebody remembers, somebody can relate. And somebody may be dealing right now. You may be going through and you say, you know what, I don't know what I'm going to do. His word says he's with you. If you know him and you're walking with him, he, first and foremost, if you're walking with him, that means he's with you. Amen. Amen. Y'all, God's word says he's for us. And if he's for us, who can be against us? He said, I'll, I am with you. I'll always be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's his word. That's his promise for you and me. And how many can, can say, you know what? There's been moments and times when all of a sudden, you know what? Something happened, something took place that kind of got you. But you know that no matter where you was, you felt him. You felt him. You know he was there. All of a sudden, hey, what's this? You're going along, everything's good, everything is wonderful, and all of a sudden, boom, something happened. And then you look up, like Paul did, but you know one thing. I know this. He's got me. You say, I need you. He said, you got me. You say, I, I can't do this. He said, I got you. To know that he's there. He said, I'll be with you. Three things. Listen to me. Three things, and some people want to argue real quick and say, nothing's impossible. There's nothing impossible in him but the three things he cannot do. Three things that he can't. He can't change. Malachi 3, 6. He can't fail. He's God and he cannot fail, and he's God and he cannot lie. Three things. Y'all, if he said it, what's this? He meant it. If he said it, he meant it. Listen to me. Somebody knows because somebody's been there, like I said. He has, and he will get in the trenches with us. Man, you ever felt like all of a sudden you've been thrown in the trenches, you've been thrown in, the, in, 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 that, in that place of, of, of all of a sudden going from, hey, I've been on the mountain jumping and praising, and all of a sudden i got something going on and feel like it just knocked me down here. How many can say that you know, that you know what, that, that, that he was right there, no matter what, he was still there? Yeah. Once you receive Jesus in your heart, it's a guaranteed fact, it's a promise of his, you'll never be alone. No matter what, no matter where you're at, no matter, you know what, and somebody knows what I'm talking about. You may have dealt with some things that made you feel like that, that, man, you know what, everybody's gone. 
I looked up and everybody's gone. Ain't nobody there. Ain't nobody there for me. But I want you to know you weren't alone. Amen. You're not alone because he promised. Amen. That's his promise. Y'all, I've dealt with some stuff in my life. I've been through some things, but I can say this. He's always been there and he's always brought me through. There's not one time, and there's nobody in here can, can stand up and say he failed you. There's not one time that he hadn't, hadn't, hadn't done what he said he's going to do. And, and y'all, to think about that, you know what? There's nobody on this earth, nobody on this earth can make that promise to you. Nobody. You know what? Jeremiah 33 and 3, God's phone number. He said, call and I'll answer. And I'll show you great and mighty things that you've never seen. Listen to me. Nobody can make that promise to you that every time you call, even with all the modern technology we got, that every time you call, they'll answer. Nobody. Nobody, no matter who it is, no matter how much they love you, what, what they would be there for you, they can't promise you they'll answer every time. But you know what? He can. He can. You see, he made a promise right there in Jeremiah 33 and 3, and he's God and he cannot lie. He said, call and I'll answer. Blow your mind, and some people be trying to figure this out the rest of the night, but every one of us get on our face before him right now and call out to him. He hears every one of us. You can't hear the person next to you. Amen. We act like we do. They just talk and we're going. We're like that bobbing head dog in the back of the... If every one of us get on our face, he hears every one of us. That's his promise. That's his promise. To, to, to know that, hey, I, I, not only am I going to hear you, but, but if you'll call me, you see, he just wants us to, to spend time with him because he promised he'd spend time with us. He said, I'll show you some great and mighty things you ain't ever seen. Y'all, how many can say and will say, to say that I'm a walking testimony. I'm a walking testimony of God's faithfulness. I'm a walking testimony of God's love. I'm a walking testimony of God's truth. How many feel like you're a walking testimony? God's faithful, amen. He's been faithful and he continues to be faithful and he'll always be faithful. What's this, y'all? He ain't mad at you. He ain't mad at me. He loves us. And according to God's word in Romans uh, 8, 38, 39, nothing can separate us from his love. You see, there might be somebody sitting here, somebody watching and listening. That, you know what? You say the reason you hadn't called on Jesus before is because you know God's mad at you. No, he ain't mad at you. He loves you. And listen to me. Listen. You might have been taught through tradition, religion, of man, that God's out to get you, that he's going to get you. Maybe you've even heard that, that you know what, lightning bolt's going to hit you. That's why somebody ain't sitting next to you right now. <laughs> That's what you're thinking, amen. And then there's some of you sitting three or four together, you thought, if they go, I'm going with them. <laughs> but let me say this to you. I've said it time and time again and I'll say it again tonight he's going to get you he wants to get you up in his arms and hold you and love you and tell you what you mean to him that's how he's going to get you I want you to be honest how many have felt maybe in your life that you went too far that, that you know what that how could God love me I want you to know he does and there ain't nothing you can do about it and how, how many have felt like, I don't, I don't know, that, that I, just, I just don't know if, if it could happen for me because he don't know what I've done. Yes, he does. And he still loves you. Listen, we categorize sin. We think one's worse than the other, but it's not to God. Sin is sin. Let me tell you first, I'll tell you in a minute, what we did, what every one of us did, we're all guilty of. But I, but I want to say this first. How many, you think that what you did 
was so, so, so wrong that he couldn't forgive you. Do you think that there's a sin any worse than driving the nails in Jesus' hand and his feet and, make, and, 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 and helping put him to death on that cross? Amen. We all did that. Every one of us did that. Our sin is what caused him to get the nails. Our sin is what caused him to die. So what's this? That evens the playing field. My sin is no worse than yours. Yours is no worse than mine. And he forgave us of all of our sin. He died for all of our sin. So you know what? Yours is not worse. And he ain't forgot about you. He loves you. He loves us. So much so that he's, he's proved in every way what he'll do for us. And y'all, he started by getting into trenches. To love us, to show us how much he loves us. Y'all, we, when, 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 when Jesus looked down from the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. He wasn't just talking to those ones that were standing down there. He was looking down through the ages at all of us. And he was declaring forgiveness over us. And what's this? Because he, some people say he, he was doing that to the ones that nailed him across. Yes, he was. That was us. But what's this? If he's big enough to forgive, you've got to be big enough to forgive yourself. Can somebody hear me? Amen. Y'all, that one, that one that died on that cross for me and you said, I'll be with you everywhere you go. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Y'all, I want you to think about what I'm about to say. If you don't know him, then you don't know what he can do. There's a lot of people that know of him. A lot of people that have heard of him. But if you don't truly know him, you don't know what he can do. And if you don't know him, Listen to me. That can change today. That can change today. Because he wants to be with you everywhere you go and everything you do. He wants to, to, to walk with you and talk with you. He wants to show you how much he loves you. He wants to show you that you haven't crossed the line. He wants you to, know, to show you that, you know what, you can be saved. If you don't know him, you don't know what all he can do for you. But if you come to know him, he wants to show you. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? You know, I just feel right now in my heart, I just feel that there's people here that related to what I said a while ago when you felt like that maybe you crossed the line. You say, you know what, you went through the motions even here. You know, people watching, listen, you went, but, but you still really deep down inside You've kind of withheld because you, you don't know, you, 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 you thought that you'd done went too, too much, too bad, too long, too wrong. You know what? They didn't love you, but I want you to know tonight he loves you. If you're here, if you're watching and listening, he loves you. Listen to me real close. He loves you. No matter where you've been, no matter where you come from, no matter what you've done, no matter what's happened in your life, no matter what's taking place, he loves you. And he loves you so much. That he died on the cross for you. And he loves you so much that he wants to save us. And you may say, but I don't know much about this kind of living. I don't know much about that Christian living. Let me say this to you. It's got to be better than what you've been living. It's got to be better than what you had. And you say, but I don't know if I can do this. But you know what? He didn't say you got to do this, do that. He said, come as you are. And here's what I feel like in my heart that he's calling for tonight. In love. Just a total, complete surrenderance. And I believe there's people sitting here that says, you know what, well, I've, 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 I've done this, I've done that. But you know in your heart you hadn't really given your whole heart and your whole life to him. You know you hadn't surrendered. And there's people sitting here, all through here, people watching, listen, you're, you're battling right now. You're, you're, right now, you got tugging at your heart and you fighting it off right now because you're worried about pride has got you sitting where you're at. 
where if you didn't know there was nobody in here, you'd make a move. I'm talking about 100% surrenders. Say, God, I don't know everything, and I don't know how to do this, but you know what? You said you'd walk with me. You said you'd be with me. So you'll, you'll, you'll guide me and direct me, and, and, and you'll correct me, and you'll, you'll help me. I'm ready to have a real life, Lord. I'm ready to have a real life. I'm ready to stop all this up and down, up and down, over and on. I'm ready to have a real life. I'm ready for things to change in my life. I'm ready, you know what, to have the, 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 the promises that you have for me. I'm ready to have the things you gave me that I let the enemy steal away. I'm ready to get my stuff back. I'm ready. I'm ready to have my life. I'm ready to have my children. I'm ready to have my family. I'm ready to have my things. And God, I'm, I'm laying it all down for you. I'm laying it all down. I don't know much about this. I don't know exactly how. I don't know exactly the way it works. But you know what? You do. And I'm ready, Lord. I want to ask you this one question. If anything I've said so far, if that's you, then why aren't you moving? And if you're watching and listening, if you're here, are you ready to say, you know what? I'm ready to give all of me because you gave all of you to Listen to me. A lot of people in their mindset think, well, you know what? I don't do this no more. I don't do that no more. When we're talking about, listen to me, if you're living with fear, if you're living with anger, if you're living with frustration, if you're living with unforgiveness, you're living with doubt, you're living, you know what, with, with bitterness, with resentment, if you're living with those things, then you know what? You had not surrendered everything. You know how simple it is to get them, get rid of them? To give them to Him. God, I don't want to tote this no more. God, I don't want to live like this no more. And the biggest one that needs to be got out tonight is pride. Pride will kill you. Pride will steal from you. Pride will take away from you. God is speaking to some folks now. Let pride hold you back. Let pride steal from you. Let pride cheat you right now. Pride is getting you. I want to see everybody head my mouth. Every eye closed because I will say this before I go further. And then I'm going to pray a prayer. If you feel God tugging at your heart right now, you feel Him tugging and you know that, that, that it's Him, you can feel it. Let go and let God. If you're here, you know what? Make a move. If you're watching, listen, get ready, get somewhere to, to make the greatest decision you ever made in your life. How many times has anybody here, anybody watching, listen, left the service in regret? said, I know what I felt in my heart. I know what I should have done, but I didn't do it. If you've got excess baggage, come lay it up here and leave it up here and let it go. I'm going to lead through this prayer. I can't, as I always share, I can't pray it for you, but I can, I can lead you through it. And it's a prayer that if you pray it and you believe it from your heart, not just profess it from your mouth, not just speak it, but you believe it, God's word says you shall be saved. What does that mean? Saved from your past. Saved from eternal death. Saved from our deserved punishment. Saved from the world. The sin of the world. Our past sins. If that's what you want to do, pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all sin in my life. For I believe Jesus, that you died on that cross for my sin. I believe that with all my heart. And I believe that God raised you out of that tomb on that third day and you're alive and well. I profess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you've saved me. I believe that I'm forgiven. I believe that my past has been washed away. 
and I have a brand new life, a brand new beginning. I'm brand new. Help me, lead me, guide me, teach me, counsel me, and direct me in every way. And I thank you for this, and I ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. We're so glad that you joined us in service today, and we pray that God moved in your life in a, in a very special way. We pray that, that you enjoyed it and, and, and that, that God just touched your heart. And today, I want to make sure we don't ever leave a service without giving an opportunity for everybody to make the greatest decision that you could ever make in your life. God's Word says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And his word teaches us that if we believe he is who he says he is and he did what he said he would do, that, that if we believe that he died on the cross for our sins, that God our Father raised him up from the dead and we profess him as Lord and Savior of our life, that we could be saved. And today, praying, if you haven't made that decision, God and God only knows the heart of every person. First Kings 8 and 39, you know your heart, God knows your heart. If you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision. And, and even to think about it, what do you have to lose? Today, you didn't tune in by chance or coincidence. You didn't tune in, you know what, by cho chance happening. You're here by divine appointment. So if you haven't made that decision, I pray that you make that decision today. And if you do, we want to hear from you. We want to know what took place in your life. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a number, the app, the website, that you can reach out to us and let us know what's happening. And if you got prayer requests, if you're watching and you got prayer requests, we got people praying all the time. Let us know. Send your request to us and we promise you we're going to, to, to put it before folks and we're going to put it before God. And if you get those answers, you know what? Let us know. Let us know what's happening with you. And if you want to come at any time, we'd love to have you to be a part. You're a part of our church family right now. We'd love to have you. If you want to come here, we'd love to see you. I want to thank you again for, for joining us today and thank you for, for just being with us and know that, that, you know what, God's got you. He loves you and so do we. You have a blessed day and know that, that you know what, this day is the day the Lord made, so rejoice and be glad in it. We love you. Have a blessed day.